Well, you know, I guess we really have to determine whether we're going to be able to, um, you know, have uh, some of these postponed games played in the spring. Uh, our numbers have remained fairly consistent, which I think we shared on the last call, but now obviously we've eliminated a couple of scenarios. So we're probably, Ryan, somewhere in the 50 million to 80 million range uh, of impact, depending on what we're able to do in the spring. Uh, so we're exploring all options, obviously. Uh, I think people probably heard about, you know, the exploration of the Pac-12 is doing about some debt option uh, through the through the league, through the center. Uh, we're also exploring some some local options, and then we'll have to consider, you know, what other revenue options, creative revenue options there might be, and and always uh, cost containment. As you know, you know, we've had a hiring freeze and a spending freeze. We already took a number of personnel actions. You know, we we uh, took about 10% of our staff uh, had to do leave without pay, which is a really difficult decision. Uh, and the rest of our team, coaches included, uh, took a 10% across the board pay cut and we suspended all incentives through the fiscal year. So uh, we've already taken a first step, um, but we'll continue to try to figure out a way uh, to, to close that gap for, for this fiscal year and, and make sure that we're ready to accelerate out of it. Well, we don't have those details yet, Matt, but you know, that's, we've had a football, a Pac-12 football working group that's done a great job of football administrators, of league officials, uh, and lots of conversation with football coaches about you know, how we can do you know, different models. And you know, so now we'll pivot to a model that determines what we can do after January 1. Again, you know, what we've done is postpone sports through the calendar year, and that may give us a chance to do something uh, earlier than, than what would be the spring. You know, if we can do something in January, February, uh, and we truncate that uh, to fewer games, I don't know the exact number, but we'll explore all types of those models. Uh, we will obviously keep health and safety at the forefront. You know, we would make sure that there was enough time for rest and recovery before we pivoted to the 21 season. So, you know, it's time for that working group to get back together and start looking at what options are and health and safety will remain at the forefront uh, of all those conversations. The reaction of the player, so it's, it's difficult, it's painful. I think when um, everyone that plays a sport, coaches a sport is fully invested. Uh, I think, you know, the level of investment of our place and our people from every player, every administrator, every person in operations in the training room, it's uh, just, 100% all in. So it was, it was painful. Um, it was, uh, at the same time, it was acknowledged as we, we stick by what we say and what we do. You know, you had heard Rob say it several times, we're going to do the best and the right thing by our student athletes, regardless of what that was. And, and the word by the medical advisory board and, you know, though the powers that be was that this is the best thing as it relates to their safety and welfare. So, they understood that as well. And I think they appreciate that. You know, now everyone picturing a fall without, I think that's the part that sinks in and it's hard to deal with. But um, it's been kind of interesting that, you know, I, at this time of year, at the end of any type of session, whether it be the spring session or the season, I meet with every player one-on-one. -on -one, and that's what has been, that's what I've been doing the past uh, 24 hours, 36 hours. And I, you see both sides, you see the fact, yes, we would love to play, but we greatly appreciate the fact that we are doing right by our people. So no decisions have been made. And I think that naturally happens. I think there's a lot to digest right now. And at the same time, there's uncertainty as to what it looks like going forward. I think guys, you know, we've been here for about nine weeks now, right. And including the onboarding process. And that's a long stretch for us. We usually do our, our cycles in five and six week uh, increments or whatnot. So they've been here a long time. I thought it was important for them just to break away after we have our one-on-one -on -one meetings to check on them and see how they're doing mentally, how they're taking this in. Um, the surprise, and not surprising part, the kind of interesting part is, you know, we've, we do have the ability to train during this time, but we've made the decision that, hey, hey, you have access to the facility, do what you want. I come out there and just about everybody's out there training and running around. So. It's, uh, it's pretty unique um, what we have here. And those conversations with those guys are going to be very deep, very well-informed conversations. And to have that, we just need a little bit more information, a little bit more time. In terms of our football players in town, you know, everyone has, has onboarded here and has, has been in town for a minimum of seven and a half weeks. And 
you know, I, we all know this is an awesome town, beautiful weather, especially during this time of the year. And to have access to this, these kind of facilities, to be able to uh, be provided with the medical support here, as well as the academic support for the guys who are taking classes, to be around their teammates, to be, to be safe, right? To really feel safe and supported, uh, especially during a time like this, is very important to our players. And, you know, I appreciate the administration going the extra mile and continuing to provide the same type of support and atmosphere and environment for, for our players, even though the season has been postponed. So in conversation with our guys I expect a fair amount of guys to stay in town I actually uh, expect several visit there's going to spend a little time here in Eugene and, and maybe taking a little bit of you know obviously all the, the natural you know um, opportunities that are given to us by by being here so well up until now it's been really structured because you know as Rob mentioned we had our parameters set we were abiding by the eight, eight hour rules when it was eight hour rule time and then progressing to the 20 hour period a week when it was time but only progressing if it was deemed safe to continue progressing um now that all this has been postponed yeah it does it's it's different but it's different in a positive way in the sense that i don't know if there's ever a time in in the history of, of modern sports where a young generation like this has had the opportunity to take more time to work on their craft, to legitimately take a deeper dive into the academic side of things and advance themselves academically, make more progress towards their diploma. And then realize that, you know, it, it may seem like it's a long ways away, but time goes by pretty quickly. And before you know it, you're going to blink and you're going to be playing football again, or you're going to be in, in the middle of camp. And you really want to make sure that you use this time uh, to the max in terms of polishing and, and, and improving your craft and understanding the playbook and spending valuable time with your family, getting to know your teammates better, making sure you don't let your guard down as it relates to protocol and the virus, right? Not losing sight of the big picture and making sure that hey, you got to, and you all know, you know, in this industry, rarely, rarely is there a pause, you know, if ever a pause where you can actually improve. And, um, you know, I feel that our guys are of that type of a DNA. But we're going to take advantage of that. That's going to be a huge point of emphasis. And uh, we're certainly not going to sit around and, and pout and anything of that nature. We're just not like that. And we don't recruit guys that are like that. So the expectations are still going to be extremely high of how we conduct ourselves, of how we hold ourselves to a high, a high standard. And uh, we are looking forward to, again, the opportunity when it does come around. No, I think you know, we always encourage our players when they have something that's important to voice that, that their voice be heard. And uh, the primary concerns of, of players, and I think you're feeling it across the country as more and more data surfaces, is their safety. Is They all felt extremely safe here. Uh, they were very trusting of our medical staff and our protocol. The concerns were, hey, we're, we're doing really well here. How are things outside of here, the teams that we're going to be able to play, are they following the same protocol? Things of that nature were at the forefront of those discussions, and we had those discussions. And, and we will continue to have those discussions or anything that may come up. That's just the way that we do things. So um, transparency is huge in our program. We'll continue to be so as honesty and being up front. So uh, really appreciate them being honest with me and also looking forward um, to progressing and, and growing as a team and being able to have conversations like that and moving forward. You know, I think we passed the test well. We really did because it, it really was a test and the test lasted a lot longer and came with a, um, a very, you know, I would say uh, a, a, a true, um, I would say painful, you know, conclusion, right? A real one, but all this comes with a conclusion that and a decision that was made for the right reason. So how did we do? We did extremely well because guys were here. Um, guys did their part in terms of working hard, following protocol. Uh, the testing results show that, you know, I'd, I'd love to see how that um, just compares nationally as, as it respects to anything, not just football, for an organization to comply and to hold themselves accountable to a certain standard when it comes to protocol to keep a place safe, to prevent, you know, each other from getting sick. And then, you know, we had the opportunity to, to be with our guys out on the field for some of the skill instruction stuff. 
and watching them work, watching them push, watching them finish drill to drill, um, seeing that they retain so much from the season, so much from the spring. I think this team is going to be ready for anything that's thrown its way down the line in the future. I think we saw the development and the grooming of some young leadership as well that all of a sudden found themselves in a role that they probably weren't expecting to be in for another couple of years while they're there now. So all in all, uh, extremely proud of the players, extremely proud and thankful for the organization, uh, the administration, everyone involved now. I mean, there's, there are people in, down in the training room, um, down in the cafeteria, you know, you know, custodial department. I mean, you, you name it, top to bottom, you know, Jimmy's on here, you know, Patrick Pearson's on here. All these guys have just been, um, they've been incredibly resilient and just, whether it be we were actually allowed in the building, showing up in person with uh, the right attitude, big smile, ready to attack the opportunity. So i uh, proud of everyone, proud to be a, a part of this organization for the way that we handle things. You know, Ron, I'd like to see what that looks like. You know, I don't, uh, I mean, I think we all want to play football. I would like to see what that looks like on paper to see what that actually means. You know, when is the start date? What type of practices are there? What does that mean for the following season? And what does that calendar look like as well? And then that's always going to be the biggest question, right? How much football can you play in a certain amount of time? So open to any and all ideas, but certainly would like to take a look of, at what that really means before saying, hey, that looks, that's a great idea, or maybe that's not a great idea. So, but open to any, anything regarding football. My only understanding of recruiting is that you got to do it at a high level and you have to do it at a high level every single day until we get answers. And the best thing we can do now is proceed as we normally do um, without you know, any hesitation and without trying to, um, to overthink it. Um, it's only fair to the guys that we are recruiting uh, to our current roster that we do it that way until we get any type of change in plan or any type of, you name it, any type of, uh, adjustment that we have to make, but we're prepared to do whatever we're asked to do. It could work both ways. I think the biggest test of this recruiting cycle, maybe this answer is a little bit off the original question is that because a lot of guys have not had a senior season. And, and I know that a lot of schools, including ourselves, we've identified a lot of prospects, rising seniors that we feel very strongly about that we have offered and recruiting hard, but there's also a large chunk right, of, a, of the student athlete population in high school that is going to develop and guys that are going to be great football players, guys that are going to be NFL players that no one's going to get a chance to see. So, you know, anytime you can play football, it's, it's, it's great for development. You know, it really is. And I think what as high school relates to college, college relates to the NFL. I think both are kind of sitting, you know, uh, or, or kind of postured and looking at this in very similar ways and trying to figure out what is best. Uh, it could go either way. It really can. It could go either way. I don't think there's any downside ever to playing football. Um, and at the same time, guys got to figure out, okay, is this a window to get in and start getting used to a playbook of a team I'm going to be playing for sooner? Do I need more development or do I just want the fulfillment of my senior year in high school? There's a lot that goes into it and everybody's different. Uh, and I do think it's important to not only ask and kind of dig deeper on it, how everybody feels about that, but also to respect the decision of that student athlete as it relates to, to their goals and aspirations.